Hi, my name is Amy Ferguson. I'm one of the pediatric hospitalists. Today I'm here talking to you about viral bronchiolitis. Um, this is actually a very, very common. It's one of the actual most common reasons for a patient two years and younger to be admitted to the hospital. So these kids, when they're at home, can have lots of snot, congestion, um, that can lead to just some increased work of breathing. They don't want to eat super well because of all their congestion. So today we're going to talk about just different things to help families treat this disease at home. So things that you might notice at home are going to be that your baby might have a lot of congestion that starts. This usually will worsen about day five or six of symptoms. So don't be surprised if when you're starting out, it doesn't seem like they have a lot, but the biggest thing is we want to go and get the snot out of their nose so that way it doesn't go down into their lower airways where um, it can be really hard to get out and then babies can have some increased work of breathing. So. Suctioning is the biggest treatment that we will do for kiddos um, in, out, in the outpatient setting and then inpatient as well. So most families will have a bulb syringe. So you usually will get sent home with this when you leave the newborn nursery. So this would be my first thing. You wanna make sure that you're suctioning before you're feeding them. Babies have a hard time breathing and eating at the same time. So you may notice if you don't suction their nose out super well before they eat, they may not want to eat as well. This will lead to dehydration. We'll talk to what that can cause uh, in a little bit. So suctioning. Um, I always will recommend to families to go and put some saline in their nose. So this is a saline bullet that we use here in the hospital. Basically what it is, is it's salt water. You can buy any of this at any store um, and it's called normal saline spray. Um, there's a variety, variety of brands and whatnot. So what I will do is usually go and kind of put a little bit of saline in each one of their nares. Okay, they don't love it, um, but they will love you later. So I usually will go and move that around a little bit. So that way, that's, that saline in there will go and break up the snot that's in their nose. So that way, if you're gonna go and do the act of suctioning, you're gonna get more bang for your buck, is what I tell families. Then with the bulb syringe, you're gonna depress it and then try to get it in their nose and then let the bulb come out. Um, if families are not getting a lot with this bulb syringe, that's when I would go and use one of the other devices that are available to buy. Um, this is a cop uh, popular one. So this is cause called the Nose Frida. Um, you actually, bless you, provide some of the suctioning with your mouth. So most families get really grossed out by this, but I always reassure them that there's a filter in there. So no matter how hard you're, how good of a job you're doing, you're never going to get boogies in your nose or in your mouth from your baby. Um, so same type of thing. We're going to go and do some saline in the nose. Again, sometimes you'll get even luckier um, and that saline will just go and kind of cause them to, to sneeze. And sometimes they'll shoot their boogers out themselves, which is the best case scenario. Then you're gonna go put this in your mouth and then this tip actually goes into the nose, okay? So you can see you got a good amount. Um, that is something, so sometimes I feel like with the nose Frida, it can be limited a little bit by the, how big your baby's nose or openings in their nose are. So sometimes I will find that it's easier to have this other similar product um, that actually is a combination of both the bulb syringe and um, an, a suction device that you provide by your mouth, okay? So on the back, I think it shows it really well. So you can go and you actually use the bulb part, but the tip of it is much narrower. So I feel like you can get a lot further up and get more snot. If you wanted to use it as a bulb, you can actually go and disconnect it and use it just as a bulb syringe as well. So besides suctioning, the other things that you wanna keep track of is your baby's hydration status. Baby should at least have three to four wet diapers a day. Like I said earlier, if they're super congested, they don't wanna eat, then their snot is not as easy to move. So you wanna keep your baby very well hydrated so that when you're gonna suction them, the snot comes out. Um, if we go and that snot gets down into the lower airways, then they can have signs of increased work of breathing. So that can be tummy breathing, where they'll pull in right beneath their lungs, or they can sometimes pull right above their clavicles, or their nose can um, flare out just because they're using other muscles to breathe. Um, so those would be signs to watch for. 
most of the time, most of these kids can be managed in the outpatient setting. Things to go if your baby's at least two months of age, you can also give your baby Tylenol. This will help with just the aches and pains that you and I have when we're sick. Um, so that may help with some irritability. Or if your baby's six months of age or older, you can also give them ibuprofen or Motrin. That will help with the same things. So if you're worried about your baby, if you're noticing that you're not able to go and get to that three to four wet diapers a day, or they're just showing that they're breathing really fast or having that tummy breathing, please call your doctor and they will direct you either to come to their clinic or to the emergency room. We always are here to help you and wanna make sure that you're feeling good with the cares that are being provided with your baby.